some drugs like my daddy Cause I don't care like my daddy I ain't never there like my daddy I just come see her and make sure she's straight There are roads that I play when I'm acting like daddy Hush that I break when I'm acting like daddy You never see it cause I hide all of my ways I hit it when you say I'm acting like daddy Boy, my mother came you on a... I have Lady Liv um, a Turks and Caicos artist on my panel today to talk about fatherlessness. And I also wanted to give a historical account of the pandemic and how it came to be. So I have Dr. Higgs on the show as well. So I'm gonna allow Lady Lips and also Dr. Higgs to introduce themselves and then we're gonna dive into the discussion. So Lady Lips. Um, thank you. I wanna say, um, first and foremost, thank you for having me here today. I feel um, honor. Um, I feel like my, my message is getting across to, to some people enough to where we're able to come together and, and have an open discussion on exactly how we feel. Uh, to give you a little bit about me, my name is Olivia Gravely. I am from Grand Turk, um, quiet capital. Um, I like to tell people I'm a rapper, and I try to say that confidently because I realize that it was the best medium I could use to, to, I guess, to reach the initial step in your book, which is like, you know, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lady Lives, the rapper, you guys. Dr. Higgs? Hi, my name is Dr. Della Higgs, and um, I'm a cultural theorist and a historian. And um, I am honored to be a part of this discussion today um, as we, we talk about our black men and black boys, and in terms of um, the absentee father, and, we're, and looking at that from a historical point of view, and we can't talk about um, black men and, and black boys and absentee fathers in the home and in their lives without talking about slavery and the trauma um, that has been passed down you know, through slavery and colonialism and post-colonialism and, and the era that, that we live in and you know, what is going on when we look at what's going on in the world. We don't even have to go outside of the world. We can look in Turks and Caicos Islands mm -hmm. with um, what's going on with our young boys and, and men right now. And I think that uh, this discussion is a timely discussion and um, I just look forward to what we talk about and what comes out of this, and hopefully, you know, you also learn from the discussion. So thank you so much. Thank you. So Lady Liz, you dropped two mixtapes called Daddy Issues. Right. What, what inspires you or motivated you to bring up that topic in a mixtape? Because you don't see music artists dropping mixtapes about their trauma or their, their, their struggles. So what motivated you to release two mixtapes around this issue? Um, I must say first, uh, music has been a blessing in my life because I feel like it's always been a medium where I was able to express to heal. So if I was hurting, I'd go home, I'd write a song, I'd write a poem, and I'd, I'd feel better. And I realized that, that that medium worked in every sense of my life. So, for example, if, if I was mad with moms, I'd come home and write a song. If I had a bad relationship, I'd come home and write a song. I didn't like a teacher. <laughs> write a song. Right. And then when the teacher made me mad, you know, I'd come to school, I'd, I'd be rapping a song and feeling good because you don't know. <laughs> That I, you know, so it was I always. It's song about you. <laughs> yeah, it's a song good too, and don't maybe show it to my friends. Because <laughs> then, I mean, I think that started it off. Well, it, it was always a good feeling. It was always good to put bad feelings into that. Mm -hmm. So, with daddy issues, um, I first want to say my dad was, is a brilliant man and very present. Mm -hmm. And my discussion today is really the absence of his father, which initially created the absence that he created in my life, you know? So what inspired me to, to start writing about daddy issues was as, in a, as a grown woman now, the perspective that I have of what a daddy was when you're a little girl is, is different. When you're, you're grown, you, mm -hmm. you go through life, yeah. you, you get experience. So even the resent maybe that we have towards parents sometimes, 
we are able to understand it more uh -huh. because of the life that we live. So through my music, I was able to, as an adult, I'm able to have a better perspective on what my father was in my life. It hurt. So when I hurt, I put it into the right. music and I felt, I felt like that was also a good way to find forgiveness uh -huh. for him and realize that, like I said in the beginning, he is a brilliant man. And sometimes our system here um, is, is a byproduct of his environment, which uh -huh. initially is a byproduct of our environment. Mm, yeah. And the cycle just, yeah. right? But um, mm -hmm. music, music has always just been a medium to express myself. So that inspired daddy issues too. See, and that's a, that's a great thing because um, of your audience and you know through music and the people that you're able to reach you know, because uh -huh. we look at we look at your issues, and you're having these issues, and you're writing these because this is your creative outlook and uh -huh. your creative creativity uh -huh. being displayed, and however you know you choose to in the, your words. But those words, you know, you're doing this for you. It, it helps right. me. Right. But you know, the audience and the people that read or listen, and you know, th those words. So that's why I think that in terms of creativity and writing and music and just people being creative within their their, their own skills, mm -hmm. you know, it, it helps yeah, yeah, the wider, you know, mm -hmm. so you never know, you know, how your music has penetrated, who your music has penetrated and, and how throughout, you know, the community and throughout, you know, far beyond right. where, where we're here, where right. we're at, you know. What has been the feedback from Daddy's Issues 1 and 2? What was, how did your fans react to it? Um, that's a great question. I found um, lots of love. Mm -hmm. You know, and it taught me that if, if, if you're afraid to say something because you're afraid of what people might think, mm -hmm. just live in your truth. You'd be shocked to know how much people care can relate to you, understand it. The feedback I felt was understanding. I didn't mm. think I was gonna understanding. It was almost like, you ain't alone. Mm. You understand, it's just people afraid to to speak about it. And I guess I, I created somewhere where they can, they can feel it too. And feel like it's okay to even open up and talk yeah, about and, it. Yeah, and right. the things you look at it, you give voice to the voiceless. Mm. Right? You know, mm. you, you, you have the words, you have the creativity, you, you have the voice. And some people, you know, like you said, they don't know how to talk about it. Mm. Right. They don't know how to speak, but, you know, you give your voice is giving them voice. Right. And I mean, so I call it that. If I could touch on it too, why, why did daddy issues? My mother was a. I won't say a primitive woman. She was a woman that didn't, didn't know how to read, didn't know how to write. My father knew how to pick them. I feel like he was, he had me at a late age, like late 40s, early 50s. Uh -huh. So you get raised by a, a, a different man that's raised in the, it was born in the 1950s. So you gotta, yeah, my dad was born in 1951. Wow. So you gotta think back like the, their mindset and everything. Uh -huh. So I also did daddy issues because I felt like for a woman that did not know how to read and write, she did not, I am her voice. Mm. You know, sometimes uh, I feel even 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 our women here, men do them wrong, and all they can do is sob, and you don't have yeah. no, no way to get it out. She ain't got no, I guess, no arts to. So I also felt like I wrote that issues for her because she thinks that people don't understand because she was a Dominican lady that came here at a young age that got involved with a really older guy, and she didn't, and all she could do was survive with him. Because if you don't know much, then yeah. So it was just like I needed her to have a voice, and daddy issues help me. And you have, tell yeah, you talk about daddy issues, and but you're always you're also talking. What I hear, you know, from you speaking, is talking about um, empowering women. Mm. You know? yeah. And when you look at at women through through history, and and especially black women, mm -hmm. you know, through history. Um, our voices, you know, has been silenced. Mm. Right. You know, voices, you don't have voice. Mm. Your right. body is not yours. You right. know, right. Right. so everything, yes, so you're just, and you know, from the auction block to, you know, now freedom, right. you know, and you're free. Technically, by, you know, but you look at how 
you know, women and black women through history, you know, in terms of having a voice, you know, the, the, you, you, can you imagine living in an era where um, you, the space, the body that you occupied, you don't even own that, you know? Right. And so now you have, and now you have women today in, you can stand and you can say, you know, my mother didn't possess this. My mother, so I stand tall, I stand in her space, right. mm. you know, right. for her right. because she can, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm here. Right. I'm here, I'm mighty, and she is through me, you know, mm -hmm. reflecting. So, um, right. you know, that right. is, yeah, and that's right. a, empowering for you know, all women. That's how we break generational curses, don't right. we? Mm -hmm. Right. By addressing those issues. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's initially the where the yeah. most powerful part of it when it was being her voice, really. Yeah. I hear um I feel here in Turks and Caicos too we need we need more outlets like that. Mm -hmm. Because if people feel even through art, sports, anything, that they feel like they could be a bit more expressive. Yes. Or put paint somewhere. You know, and create a culture in which it's okay to talk about these things. Right. You know, then we'll have less trauma, less mental issues, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, at the same time, I can't, my father was a fatherless man. Mm -hmm. So understanding, understanding that also, you kind of, you see the pattern. Right. You see, you see I mean, we're so used to having a culture of, okay, you know. So you talk about your father being a, a fatherless father. So I guess now this will open the floor to Dr. Higgs. Yeah. How did this happen? How did her father become a fatherless father? What could have led to that? We talk about situation. We we when we talk about um, Black history, and and I'm not just talking about Caribbean, you know, Black history. I'm talking about our histories in the Western world. And you look at our histories in the Western world, and you have to look. And I know um, the average person will be like, uh, but I've never been enslaved, but I don't know what it is to be slave. We ain't no slave right now. We free, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, people will say, yes, we have. But when you look at the trauma, you know, that um, has been passed down through slavery, and you, when you look at black bodies, okay, and the violence that has been associated with black bodies, mm -hmm. And you look at black men, and in terms of power, and what the power that the powerless, you know, black men within slavery, okay? And you look at black men in these homes. People, uh, black folk wasn't allowed to be married, mm. you know, when you look at slavery. And that's where the, this idea of the jumping the broom, right? You know, it was a civil, yes, union, but they, it didn't mean, you know, anything. And then, for um, in most systems, black men would be removed from the home because you're not married, you're not a family, you're not, you know. So the black family, the black nuclear family was non-existent. Right. Was non-existent because what happened is that slavery um, touted the idea, propagated the idea, and was empowered and was long elongated because you don't put a family together, you know, and give them that strength mm. because those connections are built. Mm. And then somebody stepped to your father, your mother, your sister, your, you know, we know we, we jump, we fight with them every day, but no one is gonna, you know, you're gonna fight and you're, you're gonna defend them, okay? But what happened in, in slavery is that you keep these people apart so these bonds you know, do not grow, right? Think, yeah. And so, yeah. yes, and so the black father was not allowed in the home, and for the most part, was not allowed in the home with the family. You'll have women with children, and the man live miles away at another plantation. Okay. You know, and okay. then you would have, sometimes you'd have women that are not allowed to be in the house with their children. The children live here, but the women live, you know, so mm. that division, you know, that was strategic. Mm. You know, that was certain because we have to avoid and we can't have these relationships that's built. And that's why you had, you know, children being on the auction blocks and sold away from their parents and men and women being sold away on the auction blocks, like, you know. And so when you look at that, you know, you look at 
today and men being removed from their home and the ones that are in their home, the masters are able to come in their home because they're powerless. Mm. Right. You know, they're powerless. Come in their home and they can do anything they want to their wife, their daughters, their, mm. you know. So it's easier on their psyche to disconnect. Right. Right. It's right. easier on their psyche to just disconnect. Because that, that disconnection doesn't allow me to feel any pain. Right. Right. Because right. right. I can't do anything to defend my I'm daughter. Anywhere. I right. can't do anything. Wow. So for me wow. to protect yeah, my right. psyche and to protect them, you know, also, I just have to disconnect from it, you know? And That's so, true. and, and, wow. and then people, you don't know, look at that and say, because outside people, damn, she crazy. They've <laughs> never been a slave. But, you know, right. we have an experience, but yes, when you look at how trauma transfers, and mm -hmm. trauma is innately a, a part of us, and you look at black men, and people say today, oh, um, you look at the white nuclear family, and you will find the most, you know, parents, both parents in the house, mm -hmm. as opposed to black families, you know. Oh, it's so easy for a black man to just walk away. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. No, it's not easy. Oh, yes. You know, it's not, e this is how it's been constructed. Right. From time, it's how it's been constructed from time, okay? To protect that black man, his psyche, to protect his wife, his daughters, his kids. I have to be removed, okay? Or I stay in this in, in this environment and be emasculated right. in front of my kids. And so if I talk to my kids and I say, I don't want you to do this, and the master says, who the children have to listen to or who would they listen to? Mm. So that man is powerless. He's powerless. So when we look at those, those things, and th that's general, you mentioned something, um, how did you call it? Generational curses? Curses, yeah. Curses. Yeah. So, yeah, curses. And so you can just be in literal, you know, and, and using words for the time. You can look at that from that kind of, of view. And mm -hmm. through that lens of, yes, looking at generational curses. That, okay, I haven't lived this. I haven't experienced this. I haven't, but, you know, that trauma, it passes down passes down and we can label that looking it through the lens of generational curses mm -hmm. you know if it makes more sense for people you know right. to, to, to try and wrap their head around you can look at it like that and so we still have to date the absentee fathers you know and that because we, if we look at, 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 at the US and we look in the Caribbean you know, it's not, I don't think that the number is that huge that, you know, they report all the time, oh, black men just have these 10 baby mamas and don't take care of the children, mm -hmm. don't, you know, no. That's, that's just, that's, that's a history of trauma yes. of me being afraid to stay in a house because I could potentially lose my family. So I'm disconnected from it to protect myself. Right, right. right. And also protect them. Protect them. Imagine you as a man and someone coming here, I want your 12 year old daughter. Mm. Okay? And you have to watch that. Mm. There is no way you love your child. There is no way. Okay? And then you go, you put your child in jeopardy, in jeopardy too. Right. Because mm. you're going to be killed. They're going to, you know, mm. harm the child. And so these things, you know, have to be put in place and you have to have that disconnect right. in order for, yes, just in order for the family to, to thrive, right. to, to live, not even thrive, to live, to survive, right. you right. know, and we're still look in survival mode. Definitely. Right. You know, it's the truth. It, we're still in it. Like you look at black communities today and the amount of black communities that are in poverty today. And I think the reason why it's like that is because the family structure is broken. I think the, the most important institution in any community is the family. Right. Everything starts from the home. And if that home is broken, we're going to have a broken community. Right. You know? And look at black, black family structures. You know, we, we have recreated the black family. Okay, and when you look at in other cultures, the family in the house, in the home, the mother, father, two kids, your kids, you know, for the black, black family, okay, you have these men and women being auctioned off from the, away from their children, okay, 
the aunties, the grandmother, you have children being raised by the grandmothers. Mm -hmm. So now the grandmothers have to step up and be parents to their grandchildren. Wow, I was raised you by know? my grandmother, by the yes. way. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you have aunties, you know, in the role have to step up. Uncles, cousins, you know, have to be in those roles of fathers because that father was so this we have to in, in black families and not just in the Caribbean, this is all over. You know, we have reimagined right the black family and reconstructed the the black family to fit that old narrative or that old structure. We might think we are free, mm -hmm. but we are still following that structure. And how do we address it? How do we build something new? I think for me and Lady Liv, we started speaking about it, and we started. We both of us, with our within our capacities, have our platforms. But I mean, apart from speaking out, what are other ways we can address this issue within our community? I think that yes, like you said, speaking out and giving voice, you know, and educating, mm -hmm. educating, and we have in our communities now, you know, it's. <laughs> and we live in a really polarizing state, you know, because we have, if you speak up on an whatever topic, you know, and if that is a controversial topic and it's not, you know, you can be hurt, you know, financially with your job, with your, you know, you can be hurt. So it's hard for, when you look at the collective community and you look at everybody in the community for, for me as an individual to stand up and say, you know what, this, I'm taking a stance. Mm. Mm -hmm. We have to, you know, and I don't have the collective community support. Mm -hmm. that, that's hard, you know, because when they come, they're coming at me. Right. Okay. Just me, you know. So in order, we need the collective community. We need people in terms of education, and we need people to be enlightened, mm. you know, and be on the same page about some topics you know i was listening to um a live show uh the other night and we're talking about um the decolonizing of education uh -huh. you know and starting with our youth uh -huh. and being able to empower them through education we are five-year-olds you know and then they grow uh -huh. you know so they're a different group different era right and that's where change comes that's where change start, and that's where they're empowered, and that's where they, they feel and they know that I'm confident enough right. and valued enough. Right. I am enough mm -hmm. to have the wife, to be a father mm. to my sons, to my children, to stand in that once a vacant space and occupy that space of power mm. and occupy that space and not feel disenfranchised or marginalize or you know sit on at the um, outer layer of society right you know and sit at the margins of society I am the center and black men and forever you know we've been on the margins black folk in general you know and so now it's time to, to be at that center and with at that center your woman your children right right your power at right. the center you know but it's gonna take uh, re-education. Uh, now, when you say re-education, you're talking about from the schools. And yes, uh -huh. I'm talking about the schools. I'm talking about and what uh, the topic that um, they talked about the other night on um, this live show, decolonizing and education. You know, and so we're in a colonial state. Uh -huh. We know that you know we live in in a colonial state, and our education. It's thus colonial education, okay? And being able to decolonize our education system is to have curriculums that are designed to empower our youth and mm -hmm. to empower our children and to teach our children a valued identity, a valued culture, a valued heritage, right? Something that they value. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what decolonizing education is all about. It's about value. And it's about having these children, these children know that they have the power to ownership 
to mm. run this place. Right. A power of ownership, not a power of being anybody's employee or mm. servant or, you know. I can own this. Right. You know, and that starts with, with education. And that starts with designing curriculums that are fashioned, you know, that are constructed to teach our children about the power that they possess, about their history, about where they came from, about not repeating this, these histories and right. changing these histories. Right. right. I mean, Go ahead. If, if we could just speak a little bit more on to it, in the same regards, being the learning, learning what's going on in the being the center in your family to try and change those generational curses. I'd like to open the floor then to ask you guys, um, for the men that have, I f well, I should say, I feel as if for the guys that have figured it out, because I've always felt like my father was a man that was fatherless, understood that maybe that's not, you know, you want to be there for your family, mm -hmm. but because of the generational curses, um, I found him to be a very present, absent father. Mm -hmm. So when I say that, I, and I feel like a lot of, I say it in this sense, um, I ask myself, you ever ask yourself, what have your parents taught you? Mm -hmm. Like something that your mother specifically taught you, whether it be how to make, how to cook, or your dad taught you how to ride a bike, or... I, I ask myself, what did my father teach you, mm -hmm. per se? Did he teach me how to write, how to... what? And then it hit me that despite the fact that my father was in the home doing the right thing, where, you know, a man is supposed to pay your rent, um, pay the, keep the, the utilities on, your child mm -hmm. go to school, I mean, even in Turks and Caicos, we have a, a, what a good father is, and I feel as if because of generational curses, they haven't realized that really that's not what a good father is. So keeping the lights on in the house, um, you can have as many wives as you want. You know, I just pay rent, I just, I just pay school fee. You know, Johnny got money in his pocket. Right. But what's my favorite mm -hmm. color? What mm -hmm. position do I play in football? What, what have you taught me that, that you realize that there was an absence. And, and, and that kind of, it's like he's not trying to emotionally attach to you. It's like, it, it, it's just it, a yeah. physical attachment, but, but he's, 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 he's yeah. right. it, It's like he doesn't want to emotionally attach to you. Yeah. So you know they're there, they figured out, okay, that's not the way, but the trauma where they're detaching themselves still trickles, even yes. when they're trying to do the right thing, which you also have to like recognize in order to break that barrier because there are present fathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> I feel especially here in the Caribbean where they teach men, well, you know, you don't want to be a bum, you, you, you know, take your child to school and educate them. But that's yeah. the three things that you can do. I do these that's three things. I think. Right. right. My dad yeah. used to ask me how well, dare I call him a bad father sometimes yeah. and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Because in his eye, he's providing everything physically. You got a roof, you got meals, right. you got problems. Right. What are you complaining about? Yeah. A lot. But what about that emotional attachment, that, yeah. that embrace? Right, mm -hmm. right, right. That for, and I find, you know, to switch to another family is so easy because there is no emotional attachment. That, yeah. You know, so we, we still and you have. think about it, you know, the term sweethearting. You know, mm. why <laughs> so much, yeah, why, and why it's so easy, you make these connections that men can sweetheart and have, you know, Sally, Joan, you know, all these different women, but they, they think they're fine because they have the wife and kids in the home, they have a roof, they have food, they have, you know, but I can have, you know, and men me right think to. about, yes, it gives me a right, I can have as much <laughs> women as I want because, <laughs> yeah. We got a so. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So it's just, um, I think that um, when you talk about issues like these and you talk about um, um, the reimagined family structures, you know, and uh, the way that we reimagine what is family, you know, and the role that, that family plays in the nuclear family. Because when we talk about the nuclear family. We're talking about, you know, both parents and, and, and kids, you know. And so when we're looking around at black families, it's normal. We have normalized this reimagine of what is family. So it's normal to be raised by your grandmother and yep. you know, that that's normal. 
you know. But in, when we look at the social constructions of the world, the nuclear family is what is normal, you know. Mm -hmm. And you look at some parts of the world being raised by your grandmother, that, that's so abnormal. Mm. So abnormal, so right, not right. Right, right. But for us, that's that's who we are. It's it's natural, you know. Yeah. It's natural because we have because we need to survive. We need to thrive. We need to do whatever it takes to be on Earth, you know. And so we've constructed uh, these. And I, and I bring back to them this re this reimagination of family mm -hmm. to be in survival mode mm -hmm. and right. normalize it and empower it and now it's just it's just a part of our culture. Right. What is the, what is the next step for us as as a people? Um, this. This right here. Yeah. yeah. And and I, I like that. I like that it's so profound, you know, so simple. Right. This, you know, just having conversation, casual conversations like this. Right. You know, where you have a plot platform, you have a social media, and people are listening. Mm -hmm. You know, and because you do, you don't know who are listening, and something we say, they be, you know what? Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got that, and you know, and I have the power to do something about that. Mm -hmm. I have the power right now to do something about that. Let's change this. I can use my office to do this. Mm. I can use my platform to change this. You mm. know, and it's about having an open mind. Right. Having an open mind and allowing people to speak and have and providing spaces like these. Correct. That people can't speak, you know, and you as an artist, you know, can talk mm. and sing and rap about issues mm -hmm. in a space of freedom and mm. from a space of freedom right, right. you know and so i think that's what the next step in terms of how do we in terms of upward mobility and how do we progress because right. it's always about progression yes yes how do we progress from here you know and right. how we progress is to have spaces and have conversation and these are Sometimes a difficult conversation, right. you know, that people don't want to engage mm -hmm. because, you know, people be looking at us right now talking about, you know, how dare they speak about this matter in right. this space and, you right. know, right. how dare. So we have to look beyond that, right. you know, have to look beyond that and we have to, and leaders and, and the people, you know, people don't realize how much power you know, that they have that can sit down and, you know, three people just sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. and creating a Just talk. And this is so therapeutic and it, it, it brings me to the next point I want to make. We've talked about generational curses, generational traumas. Then we were freed. Imagine keeping an animal cage for so long and you allow this animal to be out. This animal doesn't know how to survive out here. So we never, so in order for that animal to learn how to survive out of freedom, it must be taught how to hunt. It must be taught how to survive, how to thrive out here. When slavery ended for Africans or black people, they wasn't taught how to survive. There wasn't no psychological rehabilitation in these communities. We need to get to that now. Right. We need to start to normalize therapy in our communities. Right, right, yeah. right. Like all of this right now is CBT. This is a form of therapy that we're mm -hmm. engaging in now. Yeah. So this, this is how healing happens, and we need to normalize it. We need to show yeah. people what therapy truly is, because there is a, there is a negative view in me saying that, okay, I'm gonna see my psychologist today. Oh, he crazy. Yeah, he crazy. No, he crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we need to right. normalize saying that I'm gonna see my, I have a psychologist on call, or I, mm -hmm. my therapist, or my counselor. You know, we have to, recognize where we're at as a community, the trauma that we're living in. Because right. right now, our trauma is being mon uh, monet 
Um, what's the word? I'm monetized? That's the word? Or? Money? Right. Like They're profiting it? off mm. our trauma right mm. now. Right, right. I look at some of, uh, I mean, you're in rap. You see how some of these rappers are. They're the trauma that they're carrying on a daily basis, how they cope with it. They're, prof right, they're yeah. profiting off of our trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we now have to, uh, as a community, if we want real social progress, we need to normalize therapy so that we can start to move up. Right. Mm -hmm. Because until we, until we do that, we are going to keep at this level. Because like I said earlier, the most important institution in our community is the family. Mm -hmm. And until that family is restored, until that family is healed, we will never move up the social yeah. ladders. Yeah, I agree. And with that, when you talk about um, the rap and rap music, and, and it just brought into my head, you know, in terms of the, the term cultural appropriation. Mm. You know? And what cultural appropriation is, when we look at slavery, and you talked about we weren't given the tools. You know, black folk was not given the tools to say, okay, you're free. Um, these are tools that you're gonna need to go out there and live an independent and profitable life, mm -hmm. you know? No, in slavery, what slavery did, and that's why um, black folk was not taught, um, taught how to read. Mm -hmm. No read and write. And we, we, we you still read, struggle with literacy skills yeah, to this day. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. don't, so reading and writing, they took that away. So we take away your power. We mm. can teach you anything because you can't read and write. We can tell you anything and you believe, because you can't read and write to go out there mm -hmm. and do your own research and find out. You know, so that was, that was taken away. You know, and Frederick Douglass, um, in his book, His Life as a Slave, he talked about the, his absentee father. And he talked about his father. I didn't know his father wasn't there. Yeah, he talked about his father lived, I don't know, three or four miles away, mm. you know, from him. Wow. Yeah, at right. another plantation. The father would come at night and, and see him, you know, but mm. the father was not in the house, you know. And so, when we talk about, you, you, you made mention of, of the rappers and cultural appropriation, and we look at how these rappers and they use their platform to talk about, you know, some of the important issues in the community, you know, and look at the monies and things that they make, and then you look at the ones, like say, um, who, who, who I love, um, oh man, what's his name? I just love him right now. This Jay-Z. No young really woke rap. Ah, J. Cole. Right. J. Cole is woke, yeah. He said, whoa, he said yeah. J. Cole. Right, 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 right. Right. I like him. Yeah. I, I like him, you know. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't think, you look at, you know, from generation to generation, you'd be like, ah, she, or why is she listening to, you know. But I love it because I listen to the words, you know. Right. And then you listen to these other ones who are singing about and talking about, you know, how much women they have and right. they're old and they, you know. Trauma. And you look at the monies. Right. That's a trauma. That's a trauma. Yes. That's a trauma. That's yeah. the trauma right there. Right. You know, but those ones are brought to the forefront. Right, all the time. All the time, because that's what they want to propagate. That's what I want you propagate, to say. yes, well, about the black community and black family, and take that over and have that as the culture of. Well, you know, I mean, I must say that that's why a lot of like, quote unquote old heads, you know, give it to the Nas and the Jay Z's, are very upset to where the new yeah. generation is taking the rap. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Rap was a was a form of protest. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. You against people. Right. So they, they used to tell you, I don't want to hear that rap stuff in the house because they don't want drama from the outside. Because right. rapping, that means you're protesting against the people. And yeah. it was it was a form of black people trying to to show you that we are somebody, that we are right. here, we are present. I'm telling you. The NWA. Right. Right. And I know. It is brutality. They were trying to end and the trauma from, right. um, from the show, Ice Tea. Ice oh, Tea. Man. You know? I mean, they, they were out. Uh, it's all the I mean, you, Yes, Queen Latifah. Right. You know, with black women and empowerment. And, they were you know? And the trauma through that. And now you have these girls. No. But, like, uh, but, but that's why I felt... Uh, like it was important to have you here because I see you on that same road. You're trying to end that trauma right. with your music. Right. We need to get back to that mm -hmm. in order to progress. Right. I mean, 
Yeah. Deep or and not allow, you know, when we, we talk about the term cultural appropriation and not allow, you know, these, um, the, I guess, prominent beings, you know, to make money off of our suffering. Right. And our, yes, our past trauma and violence that was hoisted upon us. Mm. Don't allow them to, to to use it to manipulate it to keep us back enslaved because what they figure out is, oh, y'all gonna use this to empower y'all? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it cool now. And then they poison so that when the, the rappers are speaking, it's it's not the same anymore because they I think it's on purpose. Mm. They switch the culture so that they can keep the people enslaved. Mm -hmm. That people who understand where rap or music came from, or especially rap came from, are out here saying don't allow that you're going if you're going to use your tr your your trauma or your platform to 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 heal your trauma do it in the right do it in a, in a positive light right because what they're trying to do is make you feel like saying you have holes saying you know it's cool when we got to remember that if we're going to spew these things at the same time explain that we're using this platform to say that it isn't Mm -hmm. You know that yeah. like, you know what I mean. Not normalize it. Let's yeah. let's try to normalize it different. Yeah. And while we're on rap, Jc Jc last album the, was it four four four? The name of the title of that album. Right. Yeah. He talked about his infidelity with Beyonce, and he spoke about it in a song. And he said, you know, seeing the pain on her face just broke him. I, I don't think he was aware that his infidelity was hurting his family right. structure. Right. Now that he's aware of it. He understands his importance of just sticking within right. the home and, and yeah. being faithful and to one woman. It is. Right. Because yes. if she's emotionally broken down, yes. imagine what she's passing on to, to your children. children. Right. Being present, present. Right. Versus mm -hmm. absolute present. Like, okay, yeah. So now he's fully there. And I've, yeah, right. I've seen Jay Z make so many moves. Now, I don't right. know if it's because he's present more in his home and he's just focused on Beyonce and his kid, but he's making so many moves since that. Yeah. Album. Right. Right, 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 right. So we have to understand for our mobility, for our success in the black community, the importance of our queens and our kings. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Right. Right. right, right. right. We have to we have to, to to understand how important it is for us to be faithful to women and the whole and, and be fully involved, holistically involved, right. emotionally, spiritually. Psychologi psychologically involved in the home. Right. And once we do that, I believe that we're going to progress yes. and, and make yes. great strides. And I think as a small community, we can do it in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Right. We have the potential to do it, but we have to continue having these conversations and using our platforms individually to raise this awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, You're so right. Yeah. I, ju I just want to thank you guys for being a part of this conversation and also a part of my healing because I learned a lot today just by this conversation. So thank you guys for that. And I also want to open the floor again for any closing remarks or any. I just I, I want to say, you know, when we talk about you brought up the, the Jay-Z, Beyonce thing and, you know, when we look at um, this uh, modern world that, that we're living in, and we think about modernity and we think about the um, modern family, you know, and the black family. We look at, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce and their children and the years that they've been, you know, so um, as kind of the model, um. you know. And so we see that he stepped outside, you know, uh, but now, you know, he's getting, and we must understand you know, like we've been talking about, we must understand that, you know, slavery was used to stunt and blunt the development, you know, of the black family. And um, what's her name? Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote um, in Uncle Tom's Cabin. She talked about the way that um, slavery was used to separate and to dismantle the black family, you know, and we see that 
we see that dismantle today of the black family because we have, and like we've been talking about the reimagination of the black family where it's normal for the grandmother, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins to step into the role as the father, mother was supposed to be, you know? And so now we, we understand and we live in it and we're still living, you know, in this era where we have uh, the, the father way, you know, not being in the children's life in a productive manner that will take care of and feed every aspect of that child's development. And we're living it. We're living it right now. You know, we just, we have to find a way to reconstruct. Right. You know, to reconstruct the, our families and to bring our fathers and to allow our fathers and to empower our fathers and to teach our fathers, you know, that they deserve to be at the center and they can be and they don't have to be sitting, you know, on the fence and be in this m marginal position, right. you know, in these children's lives, you know. So we have to begin to, to unpack, you know, these nuances that, that, that comes along, you know, with this absentee father and um, this constructed mm. yeah, way of living in terms of family, you know. So we have to be able to un unpack that in a free and nurturing space like these so that, you know, it can bring forth um, actual, literal, productive change. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's just been an honor to use this platform to create awareness for more self-awareness and healing. Um, I genuinely believe these are the steps that we need to take to, to help our people here heal and help our fathers you know, speaking more on it, you know, being more self-aware so that we, we are able to change it. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So, um, and thank you. Um, you signed the book. Yeah, this is... Can't wait to read it. Yeah, it's great. It's not a man's word. It's great. It's not a man's word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't the sense of my father. So yeah, and, and that's right. what... Yeah, we need to bring the man to the center. Right. 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 So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Follow the steps of ancestors who told me that money gon' be the demise of us. Mama say trust God and nothing else. I'm just tryna see my dad.